So to dive a little bit more into your gift, we're gonna play fact or myth. You see spirits during readings. Ah, uh, myth in the traditional sense. It's not like the sixth sense in the way that people think that I see dead people walking around. I would say in a reading, I less see spirits as much as I see their messages. Hey, what's up guys? It's Nicole in the Young Hollywood studio with the YH girls, Carly, Emma, and Christina. We have a very special guest today. He's sitting right next to me actually. Feel all the energy. Mr. Tyler Henry, the Hollywood oh, medium. Thank you for having me. I'm so How happy are to be you? here. Doing amazing. <laughs> Good, because we are honestly, we're like obsessed with you in like the least <laughs> creepiest <laughs> way. <laughs> we are thank so excited you. that you're here. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Good, good. So we've seen season one and we binge watched it. We were like, we have to meet this guy and now you're here. <laughs> yes. What is it like having your own TV show? Oh my gosh, well, it's been so surreal. I mean, I, I was told when I was a young kid, basically that I would end up someday and have a TV show by another psychic, funny enough. Oh really? And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. And at the time I was interested in going to school to become a hospice nurse. So I was going that route. And then sure enough, when I turned 19, I got a TV show. So she wow. was right. <laughs> well, that sounds like an amazing life. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. It went from zero to 60. Wow. Yeah. So for people that are watching at home that might not know what a medium is, right. please well, describe it for sure. us. Sure. So for me, I believe as a medium is, is basically somebody who um, connects people on the other side and mm -hmm. delivers and relays messages. So uh, basically all mediums are psychic to some extent, but not all psychics are mediums. Um, okay. A psychic generally is somebody who is able to pick up on intuitive information. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that kind of comes with the insinuation that that's about the future. So that's when people say psychic, they usually think of like future telling. But right. a medium is basically someone who just relays information that comes through from people who've passed. That's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a mix in throughout readings as well. And you'll actually see yeah. on the show, though obviously it's called Hollywood Medium, there are some right. psychic aspects. So just maybe starting from the beginning, how right. did you find out you were gifted? I think you, I saw that it was something having to do with the hospice nurse situation, right? Right. Well, okay. you know, it actually even started earlier than that. I, okay. I was 10 years old and I grew up in a very small conservative town. <laughs> and I basically went to bed one night and woke up and just knew that my grandmother was going to pass away. And I describe it almost like a memory that hadn't happened yet. I just woke up with this knowingness, it was a sense of conviction, and I walked into the room to tell my mom that I felt like we had to say goodbye. And before we actually got the chance to walk out the door, my mom's phone rang. And she got the call that my grandmother had passed. So from there, it really started evolving. But I literally woke up with this sense of knowingness and was kind of thrust into that whole life without any choice. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it so, was nuts. I don't know about everyone here, but I like to think that I'm a lucid dreamer. Sure. And so would you consider that like lucid dreaming a little bit? Or well, like people can get in touch with their intuition and their spiritual uh -huh. sides through lucid dreaming. Um, people oftentimes, you know, will ask me about astral travel and oh. lucid dreaming, and they're to mm -hmm. me very different things. Lucid dreaming is more so being able to train oneself to have a lucidity or an awareness while sleeping and, mm -hmm. and therefore have some control over dreams. Astral travel is actually considered like an out-of-body experience, and that's something that people definitely can have and people have in their sleep sometimes. Yeah. So now that you know everything that you know, I'm just <laughs> curious, um, would you say that you saw the future happening with your grandma? Or would you say maybe it was Maybe it was like a message that she gave you, like sure. personally? Absolutely. How would you describe that? Yeah, well, you know, after she passed, I mean, I considered what I experienced to be a premonition. Okay. And my grandmother came to me in a dream shortly after she passed away and actually came through and explained the process of connecting on the other side. And she kind of came through, you know, had messages for other family members, things along those lines. And I relayed those, mem those messages to other members of family. But what became kind of strange was that I would find when I would dream, I would dream of complete strangers. And I would go and tell kids at school or my teachers, and I would say, you know, I had a dream of this man, and he came through and give a full description and say what he said and they'd stop me and they'd say oh my god that's my dead grandfather or my dead grandmother and, and the person you're wow. describing if it's me so I started dreaming of people I knew and then started dreaming of people I didn't and that's really and it took a bit of a strange turn <laughs> <laughs> so how did you feel in those moments I mean were you kind of just like was, did you feel at peace or were you kind of nervous? Well, it wasn't like the sixth sense. It wasn't scary. It wasn't like yeah. I saw mm -hmm. dead people walking around. As much as really when I would just go to sleep, I would wake up and have these very vivid dreams where people would come through and talk to me no differently than I'm talking to you now. And I would go about my day-to-day -day life and share them. And I was a little freaked out when people would validate it as making sense. Right, but yeah, the actual, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, the, the actual communication that they would relay was actually just very peaceful. It was very positive. Um, you know, it was focused on being in the moment and the messages were always really healing. Right. So for me, it wasn't a scary thing. It was actually really comforting, but getting the validation that I was right was a little yeah. scary. <laughs> and it still is. I mean, honestly, yeah. to this day, it is still shocking and still jolting for me when someone says, yes, that makes complete and total sense. It never wow. gets old. 
That sounds like an amazing life, honestly. I, I mean, you kind of sound like you like you're like a genius, but like oh, I wish. times a million. <laughs> well, like you just know like all these things that are happening. Oh well, you know that's it's amazing. A, that's so sweet. Thank you. I mean, people <laughs> oftentimes ask, you know, like do psychics know everything? And I always mm. tell people it's a massive misconception. As a medium and as an intuitive person, all I really do in a reading is I pick up on impressions. And I have to kind of piece those impressions together, uh, relay them in a coherent way, and deliver them as best I can. So it can help okay. give insight for sure. So speaking on like the process, mm -hmm. do you have like a specific, you know, um, you give yourself like 20 minutes or yeah. take us through that? Absolutely. So when I go to a reading, you'll see that I actually don't drive on the show. And that's in part because I'm lazy, <laughs> but also, <laughs> also because it actually is part of my process. When I go to my readings and I know that I have to do a session, I basically will meditate the first 20 minutes or so before I go to these readings and I'll, I'll scribble in my notebook. And that's just my way of kind of forgetting the energy that you know is around and just kind of centering my mind and focusing on a single point. It's kind of like if you've ever been on the phone with someone and you've doodled. Right, yeah. <laughs> Similar yeah. kind of a premise of basically I just sit there and it just kind of helps me tap into the subconscious state. Um, and so from that point, basically, with all that put together, I'm able to just relay what's coming through and communicate. You know, it kind of makes me think of like when I'm on the phone, like you're laying on the floor and then you're like laying on the, <laughs> the, the staircase and then you're like spinning around. It's just, so yeah. it's, I guess it's kind of like that. Yeah, it's that's, definitely. That's amazing. It's a group effort. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like that. It's exactly like it. You described it perfectly. <laughs> so to dive a little bit more into your gifts, sure. we, um, we figured we'd do something in a funner way. We're going to awesome. play Fact or Myth. Perfect. So. This is how the game works. The girls, Christina, Emma, and Carly, we awesome. have a box here with um, statements. All right. They're going to read them out loud, and you're going to say fact or myth. Okay. And then we'd love for you to elaborate. Cool. You can. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Let's do Christina, it. Do you want to kick it off? Christina. All right. <laughs> okay. You see spirits during readings. Ah, oh, myth in the traditional sense. It's not like the sixth sense in the way that people think that I see dead people walking around. I would say in a reading, I less see spirits as much as I see their messages. That's a better way to put it. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So just to touch on that, right. would you see a message, it's like a symbol? It is. It just kind of depends on who it is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So when okay. I go into a reading, it's not like I'll see someone's dead grandfather. If, for me, I may see you know blue or pink, male or female. Um, and oh, then at that okay. point, I'll, I'll get an age range. Is it someone younger or older? In that case, I'll either see a younger member of my family or my grandfather, which means I'm connecting to their grandfather. So it's more of a symbolic process wow. than it is like you know having people come through and talking to them like like the food. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to take in. Go ahead, Emma. Yeah. Next one. Having objects close to the client helps you receive details. That is a fact for sure. So oftentimes, Yay. yes. Fact, we got one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. One for two. Yep, we're getting there. <laughs> one for two. <laughs> yep, for sure. So I always tell people it's it's important to bring an object. And for me, bringing an object is really just about the intention that goes into that. If someone is going to bring an object of a loved one, it's really an action that shows that they're thinking about that loved one. You know, they've put some preparation on their end for it, and it oftentimes can increase the odds for that loved one to come through. It doesn't always guarantee a connection for a person to connect, but it can can help. So that definitely is a fact. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Mind blown. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh. Go ahead, Carly. Seeing repetitive numbers play a major role in a spirit's presence. It can. So this is a fact sometimes. Fact. Fact sometimes. You did it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So in some cases, I believe that just as we all communicate differently in life, sometimes our loved ones can communicate on the other side. And sometimes that's through something called synchronicity or coincidence. And I really yeah, fundamentally believe, yes, it's the number one way our loved ones communicate with us is wow. through synchronicity. Sometimes I believe seeing multiple numbers being repeated, um, you know, certain things over and over again can be almost like a reminder of like, hey, pay attention to this, you know, and that can be our loved ones reaching out. But it's not in every case. It's really dependent on the communicator on the other side. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So like what happens if you just don't listen? Well, <laughs> you don't pick up the messages. You'll just like, keep seeing happens? 333 every time you, you know, go anywhere. You'll just, you'll be seeing it. Okay, so. hold on. I'm going to bring this up yeah. just oh, yeah. one moment. Yep. Um, you are supposed to come in on my, March 3rd. Yep. March 3rd. 3-3. 3-3. At 3 p.m. Oh, yeah. And your poor thing got sick. 3-3. I know. But, you know, we're <laughs> glad you're better now. <laughs> well, of glad course you know. Glad to be here. But that's just crazy because, yeah. I mean, I personally, well, all of us now, we actually see 111, which we know oh, yeah. is a really universal number. For um, sure. But that's so interesting that that's your, so yeah. you'd say 333 is. Yeah, in my case. Okay. I mean, just using it as an example, but yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Christina. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. The amount of time a person has been deceased impacts the intensity of their energy. Fact. Oh. Usually. 
Oh, we're just going to do it. It is. Yeah. Yes. So, oftentimes, what I would say, and there's always exceptions, but oftentimes, if someone, oh, it's like my voice is cracking like puberty all over again. <laughs> Round two. All right. No. Well, I'm here to stay. So, sometimes, if someone has passed away relatively recently, it can be a little bit more difficult for them to come through as clearly because when we pass away, I believe that we do kind of you know, go through this process of understanding you know, our lives, our purpose in a deeper way. But I believe that where we go when we die is the same place that we kind of came from. I believe that it's not a foreign place. Um, but it does require this kind of acclimation and as spirits get acclimated sometimes it can require a little bit of time before they come through and communicate all of what they have to say. For sure. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Emma? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what will happen in your own life. Ooh. I know, so that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that is a myth. In most cases. Okay. So the, the myth aspect of that is off, people oftentimes think that, you know, psychics are able to, to tell their future or, or see all of it. In my case, it's actually important to not be biased. And as people, we're generally biased about ourselves. We have our own goals, our own hopes, our own fears. And a big part of why I never want to know who I'm reading is because I don't want to know anything about them. And that includes their own hopes, goals, dreams, fears. <laughs> so when it comes to reading me as a person, it can become a little difficult to intuitively go with feelings because I have those things in the way. When I'm reading a complete stranger, I can tell them, oh, I'm seeing a television opportunity in two years. <laughs> and, and just convey it articulately in a way with, with very little you know, emotional investment on my end. But right. when it comes to issues or situations that I'm emotionally involved in, it becomes difficult to, to navigate. <laughs> I guess that, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yep. <laughs> I think we have time for one more, Carly. Awesome. Let's go for it. I love it. Oh, the box. Box. I know. <laughs> All right, you guys, gotta be a good one. really just a pretty cool Fabulous. So, I love it. You like it? Oh, yeah. You should keep it. I expect to hear next time. All right. I think we can accommodate that. All right. All right. All right. Spirits follow you home after a reading. Myth. Definitely. I don't believe that our, our loved ones are really connected to us in that way. I don't think that they watch a shower or go boo when we're <laughs> going poo. <laughs> I mean, really. That'd I made a, a rhyme. I'm a, a Dr. Weird. Seuss. Yeah, no, we're fine. But really, I do I do believe that <laughs> they're good. connected, but they're not watching us, you know, constantly 24-7. When I go and do a reading, you know, I believe that our loved ones are connected to us through the relationships they have with us. As a medium, all I do is really tell you about that relationship, tell you about that connection that's already there. Um, and that's the job of a medium. Our loved ones are connected to us, and you have a much closer connection to your loved ones than any psychic or intuitive person ever could. For sure. So, I just tell you about so it. So poetic. <laughs> oh my, well earlier with the rhyming, I mean, thank you. But thank that you. added a special touch. Yeah, yes. yeah, that was great. That was beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. So, now I'm curious, what's one thing that you wish people knew about your gift? Ooh that it doesn't work on a whim in the traditional sense. Okay. Um, I think that there are misconceptions that oftentimes you, know, you can walk down the supermarket and just give a reading on, on a whim. That might be true for some people, but for me I view what I do as almost like a sense of therapy. It's almost like um, a practice that would require you know, a lot and it requires a lot of time and a lot of emotional investment. And mm -hmm. In the same way that you wouldn't get five minute therapy, I always encourage people, you know, don't get a five minute medium reading because a lot of personal right. information can come through. But when it's done in the right setting and when I'm able to kind of connect and having my notepad and all of that, yeah. then you can have some pretty cool sessions. But that would be a big, big misconception I would mention. Did you hear that, everybody? <laughs> yep. Exactly. It doesn't happen like that, but yep. <laughs> so it's safe to say that we're even more obsessed with you now. Oh my. Honestly, it's been so fun. Oh my gosh, to thank you. To have you here. I think we got all of our major questions answered I love from it. you. Oh. You just walking in our lives was like an answer. Oh, yeah. oh, that's so sweet. I'm so Mike happy to be here. Nicole. That was Mic drop, interview so good. done. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Oh, it's been so amazing. We'll I see love you next it. Time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>